are listening to the OmniTalk Fast Five, brought to you in partnership with the A&M Consumer and Retail Group, Firework, SPS Commerce, and Sezzle. All well, right, let's, let's go. go let's next. go on to headline number three. So H&M wants to sell more third-party products. According to the Wall Street Journal, H&M is, quote, moving further beyond its eponymous clothing label, doubling down on beauty products, housewares, and selling products from other brands to draw in more shoppers, end quote. The retailer is opening standalone beauty and home stores, expanding the other handful of chains it owns, including the upmarket brand Costs and street fashion label Weekday. It's also selling more third-party brands, including Adidas and New Balance sneakers in its stores and online. Uh, Manola, I, I want to go to you first on this one. What do you think here? Are these good moves from H&M or is this like the last ditch effort, the canary in the coal mine that signals maybe some uh, more broad issues happening over at H&M? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a mix, right? Uh, okay. And some, some moves make more sense to me than, than others. Um, you know, yeah, break it down. They've been doing, you know, on the beauty side, for example, they've been doing beauty as part of their H and M assortment for, for several years now. And it kind of, you know, makes sense if you have people in the, in the door might as well kind of expand on that wallet and how much, uh, you know, different categories spend you can, you can get with them. So I I get that. I get the, you know, expanding into um, other brands quite selectively where it makes sense, right? Maybe Adidas sneakers are are more of an outfit completer than uh, H&M branded sneakers, you know, for, for a lot of people. So I I track with, with that um, gets a little bit outside of the core for me when you get into, into home, Right. And I, mm. I think a lot of um, brands and companies kind of jumped on the home bandwagon because mm-hmm. the whole, you know, COVID, everyone was stuck at home yeah. and we all bought, you know, way more cushions than we than we needed. But <laughs> that's, you know, probably going to going to simmer down and taper off um, as well. And then the other thing that I was reading about, which for me drew kind of a question mark, is this idea of them opening kind of freestanding beauty focused stores. It, yeah, that movie, you know, we kind of saw that movie with with Forever 21, right? And they're kind of mm. Riley Rose and, and and that didn't really play out very successfully, right? Because you start losing the brand equity of why people came in the door in the first place, right? So yes. that to me is a little bit, uh, you know, a, a step too far from, from the core. But I, I do think there's, you know, value in that, uh, in adding of the marketplace selectively where it complements the the assortment and, you know, kind of gets you the to ring the register versus having them go, you know, across the street and buy the same sneakers from someone else. Right. Um, but yeah, the freestanding beauty might be a bridge too far for me. Yeah. I mean, beauty is, you know, this better than any of us. I mean, beauty is a very competitive space. And if you don't have, you know, I think what I'm hearing from you is like, you really have to have that unique point of view, that unique perspective on beauty to really drive consumers there, especially as a standalone store. It's one thing to pick up a nail polish or a lip gloss while you're in an H&M, but when you're really trying to go after that core beauty consumer, you got, you got a lot of competition in that space. Yeah. Abhinav, Abhinav, do anything else you'd throw in there? Uh, Yeah, I think my point of view is there's a lot going on in the things that you just mentioned that they are trying to do. It's it's not one thing. Um, And given the fact that if you look at their earnings over the last whatever, seven, eight years, they were at this point, then in the pandemic, they went like this. They are just coming up to the level that they were at four, five, six years ago. I, I think they are getting pushed to sort of draw, give more growth. Like if you did six mm-hmm. years worth of work and you are at the same level that you were six years ago, then what have you spent a bunch of money, where are you at? So I think they're right. trying to drive growth. They're trying trying multiple things. Um, and I'm with, uh, with Manola that it seems a little bit confused to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the beauty for sure, I do agree with all, all that you guys said. Uh, on the third party side, uh, them putting, I mean, more selection means more sales. I mean, that's typically clear. And if you are bringing in brands that are named brands, they are going to draw more traffic in your stores. Um, I mean, I, I think, is the store profitability down? Is that why they are bringing in more brands to drive yeah. more dollar per square foot? So that's why I think you are right. This may be some sign of some trouble, I guess. Yeah. Chris, are you in the same boat? You think that you think H&M's in trouble here? Or you like this move? 
No, I'm more, I'm more in Manola's camp where I can tell, you know, you know, from, I thought I would, the thing I was thinking about when she said that was spoken like a true merchant, somebody that understands, you know, this side of the retail business. Cause I mean, I can remember back in my target days, I used to, I used to get into fights about people that wanted to ride or die solely with their own brands. And yeah. my whole thought was like, that's not, that's not merchandising though. I'm a big believer that merchandising about picking the right products that your customer wants and expects to find with you the most that can be owned brands. It can be third-party brands. So to the point, if like, if I want a pair of Adidas with my outfit that I'm buying at H and M, then stock the Adidas. Why not? Like, it's just a win-win all around when you think about it in that way. And it's the job of the merchant to pick the right products and put them in their stores. So that's my main point here. The idea about going after beauty as a standalone store. I think those points are valid. I think, you know, that's an experiment like anything else. You just can't get too far in front of your skis on that before you start to understand how well it's doing for you. But I don't think fundamentally I have an issue with anything in this in this Wall Street Journal article. Yeah, I think the only thing I'd add here is that H&M has such a massive assortment. Like, I think if you are, if you're H&M right now and you're really trying to make some progress here economically. Like, I think you got to pare your assortment down a little bit, fine, bring in Adidas and bring in some other elements. But I think you really have to have a more curated point of view than what you have right now in order to stand apart and to be successful. And the second thing I'd add is like, look at their, one of their closest competitors. You have Zara right next door doing the same thing, expanding in home, expanding in beauty, expanding in lingerie and all these categories. And you don't see or hear about any investment from H&M right now in the tech side of things. And we were at the Zara store in Madrid and the, the investments they're making and making that shopping experience better, the products easier to find, getting in and out of there, making returns simpler. Like we're not seeing that from H&M. And I think it's time for H&M to also start to look at that side of the business as they're expanding into more stores. But uh, Abhinav, we'll give you the last word here. Yeah, so one last point is given the inflation and given where the consumer stands, I'm just surprised that given they are in fast fashion, they are at lower price points, why are they not growing faster? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. They, yeah, the macroeconomic conditions should have been lined up for them to do better, yeah. Right. The other point about this too that we didn't cover is like there's a difference in expanding your assortment in the online space versus the physical space too and how much of that was discussed in the article is still unclear and where they're planning to lean in on that is unclear too. But 